And so it looks like the Biden mutiny is back on the menu. Fox News has obtained a letter sent by a substantial number of congressional Democrats asking the DNC to postpone the virtual roll call vote that they're trying to speed up. It's expected in coming weeks that would officially nominate Joe Biden, and they want to slam the brakes on that. There's just one other clip that I think maybe should get a little bit more attention, so we want to play it for you here. This is when Lester Holt asked him about having another possible episode. Watch. What happens if you have another episode like we saw during the debate? What happens if another? Yeah, what, hap what happens if, if you have another performance on that par, that, on that level? I don't plan to have another performance on that level. I, you, I don't even think you could verbate that because it's, it's inaudible. Jesse. <laughs> Listen, you know, he said he didn't watch the bait. That's fine. The other day, Harold had a really bad show. And <laughs> after the show, I said, Harold, you know, maybe you should go home over the weekend and watch The Five. See what you did wrong, come back on Monday. And he did. He came back on Monday and had a nearly perfect show. And I only say nearly perfect because I don't want to give him a big head. That's what you need to do. All the NFL teams do it. Uh, after Sunday, you have MRI Monday. And then on Tuesday, you have film sessions. I'm familiar with film sessions. Coach tells me, Jesse, the hole was wide open. That was a first down. And you run the ball right into the center's rear end. Get your head out of here, you know what. And that's what Biden's advisors are going to be doing. They're going to be saying, this is what you did wrong. This is what you did right. This is what you need to do better. Are they going to add more debates, Dana? No, that would be like adding more sandbags to a stage where Biden was speaking on. I can see why he's frustrated. This is the first time the media has covered him instead of covered up for him. And I don't think he can survive past this convention. I think the convention is going to be much more exciting than this one, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, I like that, Judge. Because I have a small camp of people who thinks that the uh, nomination of J.D. Vance and that hero's welcome and the momentum that Trump has and the polls that Adam Schiff today said told him that the Democrats are going to lose everything means that the, the move to push Biden out will accelerate. Yeah, I think it will, and I think Harold agrees with me. But I'll let you speak for yourself later, Harold. Thank you. Look, you know what? The, the sad part about this, and all of us cringed when we watched this, the man cannot articulate what he's saying. You can't understand what he's saying. You know, if he were in my courtroom, I would sustain every objection and pretty much strike his testimony. He was irritable. He was argumentative. He was combative. He was condescending. He was belligerent. Um, and, you know, if this man is working on getting the American people to trust him and vote for him, he's already lost. And the sad part about it um, is that, you know, Lester Holt is a gentleman. You know, he tried to ask some tough questions, but he did it in a way where, you know, you, you know, if it happens again, what are you going to do? And, you know, w w Joe Biden accuses him of, why don't you cover the 28 times that, that Donald Trump lied? It's been confirmed. It doesn't say by whom. And Lester Holt says, we have, but I want to ask you about X, Y, or Z. He, he just won't admit to anything, and he just... He won't even watch himself to correct himself to yeah. Jesse's point about you have to. I have to say, like, the worst thing you can make me do is watch myself on TV. I, it is I horrible. I would rather, you know, I won't even say. Um, Maggie Haberman tweeted today, uh, Harold, that the incumbent president believes polling should reflect what he sees as his accomplishments, and he does not believe the polling because he thinks he should be more popular. And there was a story, a couple stories yesterday, uh, by multiple sources saying that, that there are Democrats worried that he is not getting the truth about his situation in the polls. What do you think? That might be right. The pressure that we're feeling, uh, and you see from Adam Schiff and others, is that I think some Democrats, and you can include me in that group, are coming to the realization that we could lose the House, the Senate, and the presidency. Not because Joe Biden didn't do a good job over the last four years in investing in cities, investing in our infrastructure, investing in our ability to be advanced manufacturers, protecting women's right to choose. Uh, allowing us to have a soft landing with the economy. It's because he can't articulate and prosecute where he wants to take us in the future. The, the, the decision to put J.D. Vance on a ticket is Donald Trump saying to the country, saying to Republicans and Democrats alike, I'm going to put a 39-year-old young guy who is smart and attractive, who has a different set of views about how to grow the economy. And if I win, he has an eight-year runway in front of that, which means the courts and the economy are going to look the way I want them to look. Democrats have to make a decision. 
for a guy who can't accept another debate with the president, with the former president, who beat him soundly in the first debate because he froze. The answer to the question about the freeze, how do you not prepare for that? You joke, so you know what? What I'm going to do is I'm not going to travel beforehand, and I'll take NyQuil three days before I take, before the next debate, if you had a cold and if you went overseas and you had, uh, and you suffered from jet lag. They're not being serious about this. And as a result, I think there are many of us who believe that Donald Trump and J.D. Vance should not be the president and vice president next time. I'll accept the outcome, but I don't want that. And in order for that not to happen, you have to have a serious lit political litigation of the case. And we are coming to the realization that maybe the grievances that he has with the press, Lester Holt's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. He's not out attacking anybody. If you can't answer those questions, and I agree with you, Judge, you're going to have a hard time answering questions going forward. But one thing I wish he would correct, take the debate. I know how he likes to be to talk. Take the debate. <laughs> Do it and, 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 and show the country that you're ready for him and that you're ready to defend Democrats and the interests of the country. You know who didn't think Lester Holt did a good job yesterday was Morning Joe. Joe Scarborough went right after him and said, this is the moral equivalent, that so you shouldn't ask Joe Biden these things. Well, <laughs> morning, Joe. I, I, look, I'm, I still can't get over the fact that after, within 48 hours of an attempted assassination of Donald Trump, he did the fine people hoax. I mean, that alone makes him a despicable person. There are two, there, I, I see when I look at these clips, I see two kinds of Joe Biden. I see pathetic, when he's up on stage at the NAACP, screaming like a tantrum, just shouting these things, wondering why he's not getting a response. He's like in a car pressing the gas pedal, but the car's up on blocks and it's going nowhere. And he's <laughs> like, why am I not being treated like a president? It's because no one sees you that way anymore. It's like events, events can show a man a path and events can show men the exit. And for Joe, a man who refuses to leave, history is saying, it's time to go, old man. He cannot read the room. He, can, he can't read anything right now. And you, and you wonder, like, why aren't people giving him advice? They've given up on him. He's alone. He's on his own. They've moved on. The only people that are still vouching for Joe are, like, the hardline progressives who fear they're going to lose this hollowed out vessel that they packed full of progressive toxins. You know, they had this really good grift going where, you know, the, the, use the old white guy to sell your potions to a trusting public. But Biden is now as relevant as a rotary phone. He's as necessary as a blinking 12 o'clock on a VCR. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I don't know how you can be happy as a Democrat right now. And I think this is the difference. The right is full of happy warriors. Even after the shooting, the people were chanting USA. People mm -hmm. felt love for their country. Yeah. And I think there's a difference. You know, when you replace love for country with love for identity and you splinter human connection into victims competing for outrage, you wonder why one side's happy and one isn't. The Republicans have a spring in their step and the Democrats have a cold, dead winter in their souls. It's, it's uh, you know, that we should take their belts and shoelaces. <laughs> Harold? I think even Harold is cold. <laughs> I know Harold is hot. But you, might, you, you know what I'm saying. I mean, it, this is not a good thing yeah. for, but, but, I mean, I, I don't have any sympathy anymore for Biden. He, after the fine people hoax, he can go to hell for all I care. But the Democrats should, should actually, they should cut him loose. I don't wear shoes with two strings and I don't wear belts. But I'll tell you this, I'm not, my worry is just, we don't want, we're not being serious. I, I, Kat, I, I joined, we may have the coming at it from different angles and different ends, but I think the body politics is better served when both sides are able to put their strongest voices and make their strongest cases for the future. And it's becoming increasingly clear for us Democrats that Joe Biden can't do that. Yeah. This is not mean his service has not been good, but the service journey is at a different point than it was four, eight, 12, 16 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the interesting things is that the New York Times is reporting that the inner circle for Joe Biden is smaller, is getting smaller and smaller. And so it appears that the advisors are less and less politically savvy and more emotionally savvy and invested in him. That looks, looks like what it is. Anyway, President Biden still speaking at the NAACP in Las Vegas. We'll continue to monitor it. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.